Hello, everyone, and welcome to the latest installation of our live stream series here at All Tech is Human. If you're new to All Tech is Human, welcome. And if you're a returner, thank you for your support. We are a nonprofit committed to strengthening the responsible tech ecosystem so we can tackle wicked tech and society issues and co-create a tech future aligned with the public interest. We're going to have a lot of fun today. I'm kind of your MC or your host. I'm the founder and director of All Tech is Human. I'm sitting here in New York City where we are based, but we have a global lens and a global audience. We do a lot of different activities, both online like today, but also in person. We have in-person gatherings coming up in New York City, also London, and then a few ones that we're setting up in uh, DC, San Francisco, and looking at other, other locations. So if you have any ideas, do ping us. But for our 45 minutes together today, we're going to have a lot of interesting conversations really around one of the new projects that we have at All Tech is Human. This project is called our Responsible Tech University Network. Just to back it up a little bit and give it a little context, at All Tech is Human, we have three key areas of all of our activities, right? With our mentorship program, our Responsible Tech Guide, our mixers, our summits, our live streams, our Slack group of over 4,000 people across the globe. These three activities fall under the, the buckets of multi-stakeholder gatherings and convenings, also multidisciplinary education as our second kind of thread. And then lastly, we have this diversification of the traditional tech pipeline with more backgrounds, disciplines, and lived experiences. One of the things that we found, which is why I'm going to bring on my colleague Rebecca Tweed in a little bit to talk about uh, our, our new uh, network, Responsible Tech University Network. One of the things that we found is that there is such a hunger of interest, but this interest is very diverse across backgrounds, geography, and disciplines. Outside of the traditional kind of top down approach, which tends to be going through universities and then you know, finding professors and then talking to students. What we have done since the launch of our, our Responsible Tech University Ambassadors Program is we've taken a kind of a bottom-up approach. We said, well, wait a minute. The future is transdisciplinary, right? We, we need to kind of bust that silo and then connect these student leaders and then across the, this network and across the globe. One of the things that we quickly found, though, was a lot of these students wanted to be connected with these key professors that are doing so much work. In other words, it's a point that we should emphasize, so much of the responsible tech movement is not really happening from the kind of key establishment that's top down. It's actually usually stemming from this empowered kind of professors who are usually creating incredible centers and institutes and, and really strengthening the future generation for for kind of tackling these hard wicked issues so we've really seen a, a need to take this bottom-up approach and try to connect people and that's what we're really kind of hoping for so without further ado i'm going to bring on my colleague rebecca hey how's it going rebecca hey it's good how are you david i'm doing all right and I, I am going to just drop off screen for a little bit and let you kind of give everyone the the lowdown on our new um, responsible tech university network yeah, thank you, David. And thanks to everyone for joining us um, to learn more about our Responsible Tech University Network uh, and to hear from a couple of responsible tech leaders within academia um, to highlight the programs that they lead. So we are really thrilled to be launching this initiative. Um, the spark behind this university network, as David mentioned, um, was to build upon our existing university ambassadors program which we launched initially a year and a half ago. And that program has been bringing together students who care about the responsible tech movement and who are looking for pathways into the field and just greater involvement in the wider responsible tech community. So in taking this student first approach, um, echoing some of what David mentioned, we have witnessed this urgent need um, to connect interested students with a network of faculty who can provide guidance, and help make sense of what the wider responsible tech academic and professional landscape really look like. So even if a student has only taken one introductory ethical tech course, for instance, or maybe caught a couple of relevant documentaries on Netflix, if something has sparked that interest, students want to know what they can do with that. 
So we're trying to connect students with other parts of an existing movement and building community in a multidisciplinary way between and among schools, colleges, departments, and even programs, which we all know tend to be siloed and operate with scarce resources in such a way that they can be competitive within academic institutions themselves. So this basic idea behind the Responsible Tech University Network is to build on the previous work of our university ambassadors program and to expand it to include other people who could benefit from the network. Um, so taking a bottom up approach that finds and connects prospective students, career changers who are pursuing an upskilling certification, and crucially these professionals within academia who are teaching, researching, leading institutes and in initiatives around responsible tech topics, um, who ambassadors have been telling us they really want to connect with. And equally importantly, we'll be bringing in the career centers that can be a bridge for these students as they take their education and look to apply it to a profession. And from my own early work in the field, um, I began from the perspective of someone looking at new industry roles. Um, as my starting point. So when I created the Responsible Tech Job Board in 2020, and then looking to the academic programs that were preparing talent for these roles, asking what is the academic preparation um, and what are the academic pathways into these various subfields of responsible technology. And we have just completed phase one of mapping out the various socio-technical academic degree programs, as well as certifications um, connected to responsible tech careers. So we want to highlight the academics who are actually building these programs and are preparing students to do this work. So we at Alltech as Human have some specific and unique contributions to make to this important work that's already being done to create an interconnected network of socio-technically minded folks within academia. So we've identified a few gaps that we see a unique opportunity to fill for those within academia who are interested in responsible tech so in addition to being student first and bottom up, we are building a community of academics that is intentionally global. So we're looking to the many academics doing incredible work around the world. And we also wanna emphasize the importance of building a network that can be sustained and built up over a number of years as alumni move into careers. So because academia is so intertwined with career prep and professional development, and because students care deeply about it, we are intentionally building responsible tech career development into the program. And we're including career center staff for that purpose. So when we think about who all can be involved in the university network, we are basically opening this up to anyone who's involved in responsible technology from within academia. So this is a program for our university ambassadors, for ambassador alumni, and this program will connect and unite key proactive professors throughout the responsible tech ecosystem, as well as leaders of university research centers and institutes that are digging deeply into solving these responsible tech related problems. And we are also including student leaders who are forming clubs on campus. Um, we would love to connect all of those students who are maybe taking these one off tech ethics courses or stumbling onto coded bias. Um, and wondering what graduate programs could prepare them to tackle responsible AI themselves or career changers who are looking to pivot and want a certification to help them. Um, so we are building a network for these types of people and for many others. So the network will involve collaboration with many key academic partners and career centers across universities, and we'll be planning a series of responsible tech career fairs, as well as university summits, which will be open to the entire network to participate in. And in addition to career fairs, for students, the network will provide resources. We'll be having webinars spotlighting various degree programs, highlighting specific university offerings, as well as actionable ways to get plugged in to these internships, fellowships, and responsible tech careers. We'll also be giving guidance on how to form responsible tech student clubs on your own campus, how to plan responsible tech events, um, we have resources for finding ideal speakers, and crucially, we will be providing support for members of underrepresented groups in tech, which my colleague Selene Hernandez will be speaking more about in a moment. So for the entire network, including university faculty, 
our Responsible Tech University Network will convene advisory sessions around timely and important topics in Responsible Tech. We want to leverage the power of these superstar professors who are Responsible Tech champions. We want to provide opportunities that can help facilitate their own career development as well. So All Tech is Human will be hosting Responsible Tech University summits that will prominently feature members of the network with access to additional speaking opportunities, as well as potential publishing opportunities, as we are deepening our partnership with Springer AI and Ethics Journal. And the university network will also be well positioned to connect academia with industry, civil society, and government roles through our Responsible Tech Career Fairs, as well as our talent matchmaking service. So the university network will basically provide students with the knowledge, the connections, the resources to support them in their efforts in community development and knowledge sharing and advocacy efforts related to responsible tech issues. Um, so to wrap up, we have found that students are often left out of programs at their own university because of their discipline, um, let alone opportunities to connect with student leaders in responsible tech at other universities because trying to engage students and professors while taking more of a traditional top-down approach can be extremely slow and tends to be stubbornly discipline-centric. So we want to help bridge this gap and solve these problems while working to connect interested people with actual jobs to build careers in the field of responsible tech. So if you work or study within academia and you would like to get involved in our Responsible Tech University Network, um, if you want to engage in these important conversations within a like-minded community that spans stakeholder groups and is intentionally structured to break these silos, then please reach out. We do have a sign-up form. It's on our website. We'll put it in um, the chat. And it is also, you can find it just by linking to alltechishuman.org and finding the Responsible Tech University Network. So thank you. All right, Rebecca, thank you. I had to back up a little bit. My head looked uh, 10 times larger than yours. I know I do actually have a physically large uh, larger side head, but but not that big. I'm not a bobblehead yet. Yep. Uh, but Rebecca, I also want to point out, because some people might be wondering, like, we're a nonprofit, right? Our, our funding comes from traditional, like, large foundations. The idea there is really with our services that we're trying to offer, we're trying to understand pain points of the community and then offer them entirely free for the community, right? So we're, so we're basically trying to raise money as a nonprofit so we can offer things free. Because one of the things that we also found is that we need a low barrier of, of entry. Uh, and then I, I know the other thing I wanted to quickly comment on that you mentioned, Rebecca, right, is the discipline centric nature oftentimes of, of academia. Uh, one of the things that we had seen in our practice, right, is that we've at All Tech is Human have sometimes connected people at the same university that are focused on really the same underlying topic, take something like misinformation. But because if they're a larger university, because they have different kind of parts of the puzzle, right, different centers and institutes and different colleges underneath, there's not usually a natural connectivity and oftentimes you could argue that there's not really an incentive structure to make those those connections. So one of the things that we're trying to do is complement the incredible work being done at universities across the globe and from student leaders and from these key incredible professors who are just doing this inspiring work to actually say the power should reside in the people, not in the bureaucracy, right? So it's a little bit of a bottom up type of strategy that we're trying to do. But Rebecca, I'm just going to take you off screen right now. And I'm going to bring on uh, Professor Deb Donig doing some incredible work. Uh, and we're going to hear all about Deb's work. So I'm just going to take you off screen, Rebecca. All right. So without further ado, I'm just going to bring on Deb. Again, uh, I've had the pleasure of, of, of meeting Deb in person. Her brain is on fire in the best possible way. I can't believe how much she <laughs> accomplishes. Uh, with the projects that that she she does and frankly that's one of the reasons why we're doing this this network is to actually say there's hundreds of these incredible professors what if they could pull their their knowledge knowledge upon knowledge right because professors generally aren't, aren't people who are highly protective over their knowledge and comparatively in, in comparison it's more like a creative commons idea how can we build this this body of work to promote collaboration and knowledge sharing and really push this field farther. Hello, Deb. 
Hi, David. Thank you so much for including uh, me in this conversation. Uh, I knew I when I met you. Without you. <laughs> I knew when I met you, and you uh, today introduced, I think, our, our the tenor of our conversation so well, which is uh, the need for multidisciplinary, um, multi pronged approaches to this uh, issue of building more responsible ethical technology and bringing in a diversity of folks uh, from a diversity of perspectives, uh, disciplinary, cultural, and otherwise, um, to cultivate a technological ecosystem that better serves our uh, human values and the diversity of our, our human values and experiences. Um, I am by training a professor of English literature. I'm the founder of the Center for Ethics and Technology at Cal Poly, and I also host the uh, Technically Human podcast. And one question that I get asked that I think is a very fair question by people who learn that a professor of English literature is the founder of these kinds of initiatives, um, is why is a professor of English literature the founder of these kinds of initiatives? And it's a fair question. Um, and to that, uh, and that question, I address it by saying that uh, before we can build any technological product, we first have to imagine it. And so it matters how we imagine, and it matters who we include in the imagining process. Uh, it matters what kinds of worlds we think are better worlds, um, what kind of world we want to build, what we mean by that term better. And so those are questions about the imagination. Um, and so I want to address those kinds of things by thinking uh, in a multi-pronged way with people who are in different institutional concepts than I and carry different methodological backgrounds and, and procedures and, um, and perspectives than I do uh, to, to create um, an approach that I think uh, really foregrounds the, the need for that kind of diversity of perspective. And I'll just give you one example of what I mean. I think that oftentimes engineering takes for granted that a better world is a more efficient world. Um, we see this in our technologies. We're encouraged to adopt technologies when they are more efficient, especially our digital technologies. But of course, efficiency is only one of a large number of values that we want to build toward. Uh, when I talk about this to my undergraduates, I say, um, Okay, if you want to eat efficiently, then soy is your uh, is your best option, right? It's a very efficient nutrient delivery system. But of course, we all eat for reasons other than we want to be efficient about it. Um, we eat for uh, pleasure or for love um, of what we're eating. We eat because we enjoy it. We eat for community. I eat because something is my mother's recipe that was handed down by her mother's. In that context, I eat for community. I prepare a four course meal for my friends um, because I want to cultivate intimacy. So we don't just do things for the uh, purpose of being efficient about it. When I talk to my undergraduates, I say, how many of you are in a relationship or how many of you want to be in a relationship? And most of them raise their hands. I said, do you want your new uh, significant other to love you efficiently? And they all kind of giggle because nobody wants to be loved efficiently. Nobody wants to be cared for efficiently. Um, the principles of love and care actually come out of deep understandings of wanting to spend time on somebody. And so when we think about this, we think about, well, what are the disciplines that foreground questions about love and care? Or what is the good life? Um, those disciplines should be brought to the table. Who are the people who are thinking about those things? Oftentimes they don't belong to the same institution. And the people who are thinking about love and care oftentimes aren't the same people who are thinking about how do we build a technological uh, product that's going to fit in and to transform our world in certain ways. Uh, so I love what All Tech is Human is doing in bringing these things together. The other piece of the puzzle really has to do with uh, a particular question about what um, education is for and who we serve when we uh, educate the next generation of folks who are going into the job market. And one of the things that I think about a lot as an English professor is what I am doing, not just for the students who are coming in and uh, having the parents pay their own tuition and have four years afterward or three years or even two years where they can live in their parents' living room while they uh, figure out how they're going to be gainfully employed um, and start on a career track. I'm interested in the students who don't have that safety net. And so when I think about what I'm training them to do and what my education is equipping them to do, I'm also thinking how they can leverage the education that I'm giving them into careers. And right now, I think we are in a very pivotal moment. Um, I think it's an existential moment uh, where we have to figure out two things. The first is, how are we going to create a technological ecosystem that better serves human values? 
And the other is, how is education going to be sustainable for uh, folks who are going in, maybe first generation folks, maybe people who are coming uh, out of um, underserved communities um, who need to get jobs? And here is a golden moment where I think those two things come together in the creation of an ethical and responsible technology ecosystem. And so there's an enormous opportunity for those of us working across the different disciplines to think about how we're going to create a track um, and leverage the uh, ways of thinking and the values that we have in our disciplines to help our students um, enter into this upcoming and new and growing uh, sector of jobs, which I actually think is a constellating um, profession, and how we're going to equip those students to enter into that profession and to make um, revolutionary change, necessary change uh, in the tech industry. And so this is, I think, a, a a strong opportunity and I hope that we can uh, leverage it and come together and, and I'm so excited uh, for all tech as humans work on this issue, which I think will um, help facilitate that next step to revolutionize education and revolutionize the industry uh, and together build a technological uh, system of uh, production that better serves our human values and a culture of technological production and, and products um, that better serves the diversity of our human values. Deb, what a beautiful way to end it. Uh, I don't know how to take those compliments around all tech is human. We're, we're trying to kind of bridge together so many different people who are deeply concerned about uh, the fact that our future of technology is intertwined with the future of democracy and the human condition. And that is a big deal, full stop. And then to your point around human values, it's literally why uh, when we started All Tech is Human in 2018, we named it All Tech is Human. And if you actually think about it, that name is is more like a separation, really, of beliefs of what you're actually thinking about. Do you think that are you like a, a techno determinist where you think that the, that the future is just going to naturally un, unravel and then doesn't matter? Singularity is near. Or is it about our human agency and the human values? So, Devin, we're just going to take you off screen in a little bit. But I also want to tell everyone that Dev has an incredible podcast, Technically Human that you should also check out. There's a really good episode with my colleague Rebecca as well, uh, with Deb doing a lot around this overall kind of uh, emerging field of responsible tech. So Deb, thank you for taking part. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna bring on Sama, who is an amazing professor at Barnard here in New York, where I'm also uh, sitting, had the chance to, to uh, really physically uh, meet for the very first time at Unfinished Live a year and a half ago when we were both on a panel together to discuss uh, the social dilemma. And I know uh, I saw one of the comments uh, asking if we do any collaboration uh, with the Center for Humane Technology. I will say uh, All Tech's Human acts like Switzerland, where we are a meta connector between the people, organizations, and ideas of this nascent responsible tech movement, meaning that we have collaborators at, at Center for Humane Technology, Integrity Institute, New Public, you name it, right? We work with hundreds of organizations. If you check out our Responsible Tech Guide, you'll see actually uh, over 500 organizations that we've kind of curated. And that's a lot of what we try to do is to try to say, here's what this organization is doing, this valuable work. Here's what this other organization, maybe across the ocean is doing. How can they find commonalities? What are their differences? How are the cultural differences? affect these two? What are best practices, right? How can we actually work together as a community? So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Sama. Hello, hello. Hi, David. How are I, you? I like the brick wall background. <laughs> where where are you coming from? Well, Brooklyn. Where oh, there's, there's, there's that signifies that signifies Brooklyn. I hope you're going to pull out a nice, nice slice because Brooklyn is well known for their slices of pizza. Um, that's right. Well, thank you so much for having me and always thinking about me when um, these conversations are happening and for fostering um, more of a nuanced conversation around these topics and the work that All Tech is Human is doing in New York and elsewhere. Um, I think that a lot of what Deb said earlier really resonated with me. I really appreciate that point around efficiency and just 
the hurry to kind of get some new technologies out there and new tools and apps out there. And I think it's really worth thinking about what kinds of values we want to center when we build technologies and really asking the question about whether is this needed? Is this something that we should pursue? And so I'm going to talk about that from the angle of my work at Barnard College, which is a li women's liberal arts college of Columbia University. And what I do there is that I'm the associate director of the Vagelos Computational Science Center, which aims to lower the barrier of entry into computing for students across all disciplines. So no matter which discipline you're in, whether it's English, architecture, dance, we have students from all different backgrounds who are thinking about using computation in their work. And they're wondering, how do I get started? Where, like, where could I fit computational thinking into my work? And personally, my background's in architecture. I studied architecture, I practiced it, I finished my PhD in it. Um, and I ended up landing in a computer science department for a portion of it. And so that's kind of where I started to really think, think about how to combine my thinking about the built environment with virtual environments. And I'm a huge proponent of computer science and STEM disciplines, learning from humanities and social science thinking. And so that's kind of what really um, drives a lot of the work that we do at the center. And from an implementation and pedagogy standpoint, we do that from several angles. Um, some of them are these open public Friday workshops that any of you who are listening to this, you're welcome to check out our series of workshops and register. They're all hybrid. You can join via Zoom. And many of them are introductory level workshops where you don't really have to come with the knowledge. It's helpful, but if you're starting from scratch, there's always room for you. Um, and we, it really, the topics run the gamut from basic data visualization using something like R and Python to building 3D models of like a building or doing a data analysis about a research question. And so we're really trying to get people to start thinking about using technology and computation critically um, and the thinking that really goes along with that. Uh, another um, program that we have is called a Computing Fellows Program, which is an NSF-funded project where we train and hire uh, undergraduate Barnard students to be attached to Barnard courses that may or may not have a computational component to it. And so we train them in anti-racist pedagogy and computing. We really um, foster their thinking around computing, critical computing issues, and try to really embrace um, leadership um, and like belief in oneself uh, to be peer leaders and mentors. And um, it's really like rewarding to be part of this program and see the impact that um, being a fellow has on students. Um, and I think that it's really refreshing also to see a number of students from all disciplines really be interested in responsible tech jobs and uh, issues as they move forward from the university system. I see a lot of students reach out to me and ask, where can I find work that is informed um, from a responsible tech angle? Or where can I think about these kind of state sticky tech and society issues? And oftentimes I do point them to the job board that ATIH runs um, or connect them to the network. And so I think it's a really invaluable way to kind of break down some of those silos that David, Rebecca, you were talking about at the beginning of this panel. Um, so those are some of the ways that we're really trying to do things from the pedagogy and implementation side. Um, I think it's really valuable to have networks to reach out to. I think it's also really critical to think about how responsible tech is becoming an industry in, of, in and of itself. So to have metrics and ways to measure how we're actually increasing diversity and creating equity and justice um, as new technologies are being built is really important too. And so that's work that we really need to pay attention to beyond the academic environment um, that we're sitting in right now. So I think it really goes beyond the thinking from like a pedagogy and theoretical perspective to really thinking about the implementation side of things outside of the university as well. 
Um, so I'll stop there and um, really appreciate the time that you gave me. No, we really appreciate you you coming on. Uh, and also one of the things, uh, or a few things uh, that you said really struck me uh, for a lot of what we're trying to build with the university network. One was around your kind of leadership with other students really to kind of empower them to be the student leaders. So when we originally launched our university ambassadors program, that was one of the questions we always got is, if you are a traditionalist, you're, you're thinking top down dissemination of information. So an ambassador would, would take something from above and then share it out. But that's exactly what we do not want to do because what we're trying to do is learn from the ecosystem to inform the ecosystem to influence the ecosystem, right? And that is totally different than this tetification model of take an idea and run with it. So to your point, the ideas for the future are coming from future leaders, which are students, which are proactive professors, which are ways that we can kind of build upon this, this great work. So that's something that we really want to kind of embed within this, this network, right? So we'd love to see how we can kind of connect with Bernard, uh, Columbia University, and then others uh, to do kind of events in the area, both kind of in person and virtually. The other part, I know uh, earlier in our discussions, we've kind of talked about like tech is like kind of a lowercase t, right? That, that, <laughs> everybody should be involved in technology. It's not just technologists. And that's a lot of the work that you do uh, at Bernard. And uh, you might've seen in the news recently that Mozilla, Mozilla Foundation, they had their big, at the time, responsible computer science challenge. A lot of major investors in it. They just announced a few days ago that that is changing to responsible computing challenge. Mm. That is a big deal because one of yeah. the things that they realized, and we do some work with, with uh, Mozilla, we're a partner with MozFest, uh, upcoming March 20th through 24th. But one of the things that we that they noticed was that it's not just about computer science degree. It's not just around the traditional pipeline, a CS degree at Stanford, let's say. Everyone should be involved in this because who do you think understands the impact of society? It's not just your traditional technologist. It's people actually study human behavior, people who think about ethics and consequences and game theory, right? Artists, designers, attorneys, everyone. So again, really appreciative of your time. And I know we'll be incorporating you in a lot of different upcoming gatherings uh, that we have at All Tech is Human. So Thanks thank you. So and uh, and I'll stop by Brooklyn sometime if they ever allow me over there. They always tell me I'm a Midtown guy. I'm not sure if they mean that uh, as a compliment. Please do. <laughs> All right. Lastly, I'm going to bring up uh, colleague Selene, who's also at... Uh, Columbia University right now, master's uh, student in social work. Another area, another key area showcasing how multidisciplinary this is. So I'm just gonna bring up Selene. Hello, hello. Hey, you also have a brick wall, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, no, I, we're I, in the I, exact same room. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I, need to, I need to step this up, but uh, I'm just gonna pop off and Selene, give you the, give you the yeah, so thank you for this space. So hello, everyone. Um, I'm here to just talk about what I'm looking forward to in terms of uh, the university network. And so I really just want to bring up this idea of revolutionizing education that Deb brought up. I really love that idea because when I thought about it over just these past few minutes, I recognize like that is really what we're trying to do um, in terms of um, what our intentions are with uh, the university network. Um, and what I mean by that is that we're ultimately trying to dismantle the hierarchy that exists within the culture of academic spaces where folks have this perception that STEM fields are most important and powerful than any other field. But the absence of human centered perspectives and understandings has gotten us to where we are today. Um, so it's this is a really pivotal point in history where it's really important for us to recognize that all perspectives and disciplines are needed when it comes to uh, building tech that is truly responsible and that is truly that is truly grounded in our values. Um, and so in terms of what I imagine this to look like, um, I imagine this to look like a collective effort and one way is that I hope to do this in terms of like bu building a collectivistic practices um, is by first recognizing the in 
recognizing uh, folks who are already doing work at the intersection of tech and social justice issues. So uh, partnering up with uh, faculty members and professors first, um, because those are folks within academic spaces that will be in those spaces longer term as compared to students. Um, and after building a relationship with those folks, um, engaging them in uh, really trying to get an understanding of what is the culture of that academic space and what are the issues that are present and most talked about. Um, because across spaces and places, the issues that we see as important will differ according to uh, the communities and environment that surrounds us. So I'm interested in learning directly from those universities, um, from those communities to hear what they see as um, at, what they see as an issue that needs to be addressed so that way I can learn how to support them. Um, and one way that I hope to support folks that are involved in the university network is really just uh, finding opportunities to connect folks across universities across the country and hopefully also across the globe um, because there are so many different folks who are involved within our responsible tech network. If we just think about our Slack channel, you know, we have 4,000 plus members on that space. Um, and those are people who are involved in this uh, network um, doing similar work. And so I'm trying to figure out, I would love to figure out how to ensure that people aren't necessarily repeating work, but instead uh, finding ways to collaborate together. Um, because when we work as a collective, that's when um, we're just working more efficiently all together. Um, and something I'm also excited about is just in recognizing the fact that tech spaces traditionally and historically have been dominated by white cisgendered men. Um, I'm interested in uh, learning how to support black and brown and gender non-conforming folks um, who are interested in getting involved in the tech field and specifically interested in learning how to support them, uh, such as providing a financial um, or connecting them to financial programs that may assist them in their academic journeys or uh, specific like uh, professional development certification programs to just provide them with um, some upskilling opportunities. Um, yeah, so I'm interested in that. Um, and I also want to name that our, although the university network, network has the name of university, this isn't going to be strictly limited to folks attending universities uh, for a particular de degree programs. So our network will also include folks from uh, the community college spaces as well as professional certification programs. Um, and yeah, so hopefully, um, you know, I'm really excited for what's to come this upcoming year. <laughs> and we're excited to kind of have you part of the team. You've really been kind of instrumental in us always kind of taking a broader perspective and thinking about not only who's included, but oftentimes who's not included and how we can kind of change change that with kind of a more active kind of outreach. I like Sandra are kind of working on the Resulta Tech kind of youth led movements and doing a round table uh, to be set up in New York City and then maybe some online options in uh, in the near future. So Selena, I'm just going to pop you off screen for for a little bit but but thank you for for sharing all of that yeah sure. thank you okay we are just now rounding the corner we're going to be ending our time together uh just in uh two or three minutes just want to bring back uh rebecca i know i think uh a few folks today mentioned our responsible tech job board. That's something that Rebecca runs and also our responsible tech talent pool, which I think now, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's grown over 700, maybe approaching 800 people since yeah. launching just a few months ago. The idea there is to have like a more uh, proactive approach to connect people with opportunities, specifically right now with the tech layoffs that have laid off 200,000 people. So you actually have a very interesting opportunity. The the glass half full way to think about it is you have some incredibly talented individuals who can now be directed towards really co-creating a better tech future. These startups that are reimagining this kind of space. But Rebecca, any additional thoughts that you've had from just listening to some of the uh, individuals today speak? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I really appreciated everyone's perspectives. I loved what each of them brought. I'm especially thrilled that Selene is on our team and will be helping really lead this program with me. Um, I, yeah, I think there is a real opportunity with all of the tech layoffs. I feel like um, I just attended a tech to gov career fair last week, and it was amazing to see, um, you know, so many people, technologists who are interested in doing public interest tech work, civic tech, um, and I feel like there's an opportunity for 
technologists to get involved, not just in government work, but also in the social impact space um, and to, you know, to really apply their, uh, their talents and skills to, um, you know, places that really could use that, um, that talent. Um, I feel like what we're doing with the talent matchmaking service is going to go hand in hand with the university network, all of the um, internships, fellowships, early career roles. Um, there's just a great opportunity to connect early career and students um, with these, you know, this whole field is just um, rapidly expanding and there are just so many opportunities. So yeah, I definitely see it as kind of silver lining. Um, people who are experiencing layoffs right now um, might have an opportunity to pivot into something really special. You know, uh, Deb inspired me with with her uh, kind of metaphor talking about, you know, why do we eat? We don't want to just, if you think about it from a highly technical standpoint, we don't just eat for for, for nourishment. We sometimes eat for for love and, 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 and joy and community, right? So all these different things. So if I can give another metaphor around food, I, I would say that something to keep in mind for everyone either listening to this live stream or later on with the video is that the approach that we're trying to take at All Tech is Human is dramatically different if you actually back up a little bit than most kind of organizations. Most organizations would think about it like bread, right? So you bake bread and then here you go and then everyone in the community can have a slice. We're not baking bread because everyone watching is an ingredient in what we're creating because we are creating something that is supposed to be aligned with the public interest, is supposed to be aligned with the, the pain points of everyone here. So we need to listen more and speak less, right? In, in that sense. So if you actually made an analogy, would be more like a, a soup, maybe a minestrone, whatever kind of soup you like, that really it's a big pot of soup. Imagine that cauldron and each of you, when you participate, when you participate in the working groups, when you provide intelligence on, on Slack, when you show up to mixers, both online and in person or summits, those are ingredients that get added to the soup and that soup gets stirred around. And then everybody is, is kind of taking part in this more kind of communal, communal soup, if you will. So I'll leave it there because I can, I can speak in riddles all day, uh, but the point is that that we're trying our best to be collective, and we know enough to know that we don't know everything. And and what I mean by that is everything is malleable to suggestion, intentionally so. So this is a a, a newer idea for us. But what we really want, what what really would would be helpful is to share your ideas. Tell us about things that are happening in. Berlin that we don't know about. Let us connect with those individuals and share ideas and bring them on to the next live stream. That's how this, this magic happens. So Rebecca, uh, I'd like to thank you obviously for everything you do, uh, part of the part of the team and thank everyone for, for really taking part so far in this. Uh, everything that we're doing and accomplishing because we do move at the speed of tech and we do have a lot of projects. It happens because of people and really just the larger idea that we're tapping into something that is important to people. And that's really our, our secret sauce is that uh, we get people involved and the generosity of the community is what powers us and allows us to, to really move quickly and to do a lot. And the overall idea is that we want a tech future that we all wanna live in that respects our, our rights, our civil liberties, and specifically when we think about that, we need a next generation that's able to tackle these wicked problems. So Rebecca and everyone else listening, thank you so much. Uh, I'm David Ryan Polgar. We're all on Slack. Join our Slack, stay in touch with, with us there. If you wanna take part in this university network, go online. We've got information around this Responsible Tech University Network that you see right under programs on our website, alltechishuman.org. There's an interest form you can fill out there. So. Thank you all and have a great day and uh, rest of the week and a great 2023. Nowhere to go but up, as I like to say. So thank you all.